Looking through it, I'm going to now do it at kind of uh, full speed so you can see what you might look like when you're actually doing the sampling. So it wasn't quite enough CO2, so I turned it up a bit. Open up this space, expose the space between the O-rings to the CO2. Start your flow of water, get the bubbles out. seconds, I don't know, wait a couple more seconds, okay. I can hear the CO2 bubbling, that tells me yes, it's still on, that's good. It's a little windy here in Victoria today. Now while this one is sampling, start another one. We often take a duplicate, so this is convenient to get the next one going. You can see this is starting to rise again, so I'll just crack that open a little bit more. Again, check CO2. We still have some time for this to fill while this is all flushing. about half full. Just close it all the way. I'm taking a duplicate. You saw it already got your uh, water flowing with no bubbles, so you just go on straight to the next one. And while this one is filling, now this other one, I can take the tube off. I leave the neck full of water for now. We're going to uh, clean that out after we're done here. And this can go back in the box. If you're going on to sample uh, more, you just get your next bottle out and start the CO2 flush on this side.
Okay, that one's about done. And you can stop the flow of water. Note that as you were filling, a lot of bubbles were forming in here. That's because you have a vacuum inside the flask. And so the gases that we actually want to measure are uh, exsolving from solution while you're actually taking the sample. Okay, so we're all done with the sampling part for now. Let's go back in the box. But in fairly short order, we want to clean out the flask decks and prepare them to be shipped back uh, to us for analysis. So we'll show you how to do that in the lab. Okay, here we are back in the lab. What we need to do is clean out the water that's in the neck here. And if it's seawater, we want to uh, rinse it well to get rid of the salt. The reason for this is that we've still got really relatively a vacuum inside the flask, whereas this water is uh, near equilibrium in terms of dissolved gases. So that's a pretty strong gradient of gas from the neck into the flask. And so we want to uh, prevent stuff from leaking across. So what we're going to do is take the cap off here. We're going to open it up to expose just this part between the o-rings, making sure that this final o-ring is still good and sealed. Shake the water out. With a, a squirt bottle of distilled water, we're just going to fill that area up. Knock it against the heel of your hand to distribute the water. And do this a couple of times. Shake the water back out. Now we've still got quite a bit of droplets of water in there, which again contains some dissolved gas. So we want to get rid of as much as you can. I find it easier to have one of the large size chem wipes. Take a corner, roll it up to a nice little point. And then you can stick that point down in here and just move it around get all of the water out that you can. Sometimes it helps to kind of bang it a little bit. You can get some of the water to come into the main part where it's easier to get at. So get as much as you can, but don't go insane. Particularly uh, if you can get any water that's going to be in this space out. And sometimes you can just, if you just get the little tip of that into the water droplet, capillary action will pull it all out. Okay, so that's pretty good. What we want to do now is fill the space up with CO2 and we're going to put the cap back on. We want to also make sure that the cap's not full of water. So dry that guy out as well. We'll come over here. Now we've got a full size CO2 cylinder that we used in the lab for this, but of course you can just use the little one that you've brought into the field with you or whatever you have. that you can feel a flow. It doesn't have to be that strong. As long as you can feel it, it's good enough. I find it easier to sit down when I do this. What you want to do is put the tube in there and then move it so that it goes 
on either side of the plunger. You're trying to flush out any air in there. Once you've done that, you want to close the plunger all the way so you've trapped CO2 in the space between the O-rings. And now you want to uh, remove the tube in such a way that you can put the cap on and still have only CO2. So now I'm going to do it in two ways. This is the way not to do it, is just to take it out and then stick the cap on. And the reason is that you've got a bunch of air in the cap, which you now just stuck, uh, trapped in there. So what you want to do is pull it out with the cap right there. Okay, I'll do it a couple more times. Your goal is to flush that cap with CO2 before you put it onto the neck. And now it's ready to be shipped back to us in the box.